I am Liz Wright. Welcome to Live Your Best Life. The only thing that matters now is living by the power of this wonderful new creation life. We're going to become an undefeatable force of radiating glory, and we are rising up strong now in this hour. Hi, family. Welcome to Live Your Best Life with me, Liz Wright. And I am extremely excited about my conversation today with my very dear friend who is back on the show by popular demand to talk about another aspect of his life. We're actually going to be having a conversation about God's perspective of wealth, success and money. And we'll just see what else Holy Spirit's got in store And so I just wanted to welcome into the show my dear, dear friend, Ben Dianda. Ben, welcome to the show. It's so good to have you back. Oh, it's such a joy to be back. And every time we're together and we do this, it's just like sitting across from each other in a breakfast snook (laughs) as family. And so it's so great that we get to invite everybody else into our personal relationship with him because everyone's worthy to be sit down with us at the table and um, hear those closed door conversations. I think that's what people yeah. are so hungry for, and that's what you're presenting. So thank you sincerely oh my goodness. for this it's, community. It's- Oh, oh, honestly, honestly. And we are, we're a growing community. We're a growing family across the nations. Live Your Best Life now is super popular. I mean, we're off, we're we're well over 17 nations that are following us and lots and lots and like lots and lots and lots of you, you know, are, are joining in every week and finding the content really empowering and just keep on sending in your feedback, your comments, your requests for different people on the show, conversations that we can cover. We, we, we read every email that comes in, every bit of community communication and we're just shaping the shows around what's going to meet your needs and we listen to holy spirit and we listen to your heart so every bit of communication is welcome so ben jumping in before we start and i ask you the first question that's really on my heart i just wanted to read um and a definition oh my goodness it just jumped out at me from chris ballatin's recent book poverty riches and wealth because i know you wouldn't say this about yourself but it actually epitomizes you and then i just wanted to jump off there so this is um this is chris's amazing definition of wealth from god's perspective Wealth is the ability, resources, strength, and wisdom to create positive outcomes in the midst of lack, poverty, and or emptiness. Wealth is light in the darkness, healing in sickness, prosperity in poverty, wholeness in brokenness, favor in obscurity, love for the unlovely, beauty for ashes, and victors among victims. Wealth is a can-do attitude, a more than enough mindset, and a nothing is impossible belief system, completely Ben (laughs) Dianda. Wealth is radical generosity, extraordinary compassion, sacrificial giving and profound humility, completely Ben Dianda. So the other side of Ben's life that you're going to get a little bit of an insight into today is obviously he's a very deep man of God and he takes his relationship with Jesus into the middle of the marketplace. He's actually a very successful businessman, which you'll hear about now, but it all flows. His his success flows from a mindset that comes from Jesus, from his intimate relationship with Jesus. Money is definitely not your God. Hey, Ben, <laughs> definitely not. So just finishing that Wealth is always thankful and never jealous. It does not brag. It celebrates others and it looks to the future. So when I read that, I'm like, oh, that's Ben. That's his his attitudes of heart. And then the other thing was that you literally epitomize so Ephesians 6, be uh, divinely infused with strength through your oneness, your union with Jesus. And that's what we always see in you, you know, across every area of your life, but particularly your area of in in business, it's so evident, you know, you go into the midst of property and finance with Jesus as your source of wisdom and strength and revelation and perspective. And so can we start there, Ben? I want to ask you, in your experience, what has the Lord shown you regarding money and wealth and business and success? 
Like, and how do you do it? How do you navigate that as a believer? Well, first off, those words are so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. So kind. And Chris is an absolute hero of mine and of ours. And I know that. Yeah, he's and massive question. <laughs> but massive we'll sort question. Of massive question. See where the Lord takes us. Yeah, you know, we yeah. spent the last conversation, me sort of just opening my heart and my chest and being vulnerable and sharing kind of the depth and the low point that brought me into the high place into Jesus. Yeah. And I think that that's really where it all begins because I prayed a desperate prayer without knowing it and actually forgetting about it until the Lord took me back to that place and told me, you prayed a small prayer here and it gave me full permission to capsize your life. <laughs> And uh, little did I know what it would do to strip me down bare, but what it did was highlight everything that wasn't of him. And that was the pains and torments of this world, or like the terminology we often use is Babylon and our friend, Paul Keith Davis too. He, mm -hmm. he highlights some revelation about how we will be called out of Babylon and into the kingdom of God. And I think that that's already happening. And there's a few mm -hmm. forerunners, and I like to include myself in that. I like to thank, and your husband, Wesley, and you have been mm -hmm. such a great model alongside us, is that he had to strip out any form of variable or mixture. And I still diligently pursue that in everything that I walk through and go through, because if there's one iota that's off, then we're not building kingdom anymore we're not actually exemplifying who he is. If there is a city and a nation and there is Zion and the new Jerusalem that we want to step into and physically establish on the earth so that people can see who God really is and fully experience and encounter him. And so long as we have these mindsets and ulterior motives, there's going to be little forms of, you know, foxes and nastiness built into the mortar of these walls and so uh, that crucifixion experience we went through last time and yeah. even just marinated in it again, uh, mm -hmm. I'm continually crucifying parts of myself that pop up as false mindsets or desires that aren't mine anymore. They're really sort of outside. They're little things that try and invade and say, well, what about this? The world defines success this way. And mm -hmm. I have to actually pull back and realize that my barometer for success has actually become what does my faith look like? What does my measure of faith look like in Christ Jesus? How does it, how is it currently authored? And how can I look at the books that he holds out in front of me to see, you know, this is what your faith looks like. Because when you look at the patriarchs that went before us, what they believed in to accomplish were mighty and miraculous things where there was no foretype in the earth for. And I think that's the problem with a lot of us business people is that we look at what's currently in the marketplace and in the earth, and we say, we're going to do something similar, but redeem it for the kingdom of God. And I have trouble with some of that. I believe it's absolutely true. And I think it's been part of the model the Lord's used to pull us up into the present. But I also really, really, with every fiber of my being, be believe that there are new things to be created and imparted into the earth that have no foretype in the earth that currently exists because so much of the systems we exist in now are not godly. <laughs> yeah. They, they rose up from a long, long, long time ago and have foundations and root systems um, in pagan realities. Right. Yeah. And, uh, or maybe they started off with good intention, but have, you know, received mixture over time. So what I'm trying to say is we have to come out of Babylon the Great. <laughs> we have right. to enter into the kingdom of God, and it's only entered into by the faith realm. Because I'm thinking about those patriarchs and Noah, build an ark. You look absolutely wild and crazy. <laughs> Abel, right. knowing what is the true sacrifice of God. How did he know what to sacrifice? It displeased his brother because he thought he knew better. Everyone around mm -hmm. you is going to think that they know better. Look at Job's life. But yeah. we have to walk that, that faith type road in Christ Jesus because mm -hmm. there is a foundation to the city of God that Abraham knew that's still being realized. 
And some of these patriarchs, like Abraham, passed away without seeing the full culmination of the fullness of the times, but he did by faith. And it was counted as righteousness and justice and his testimony in heaven. And I think it's the same thing for us. We measure our barometers through uh, the normal trappings of life. <laughs> and uh, really, they're the things that are unseen. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I forget sometimes because, like I said, the earth is dictating. You mm -hmm. need to look a little more polished. You need to, before you talk about these things, have vast amounts of wealth in your bank account before you're seen as one just enough to teach us about success and wealth. But we become divorced from this earth by becoming a co-creation with Jesus now and having died to self and him living through us that you begin to find in this union walk with Christ that all desires dissipate and disappear. You know that. <laughs> we know that. We walk in that where you actually even sometimes feel numb because you don't want specific things anymore that meant everything to you before and that were your mm -hmm. drivers and motivations and ambitions and you begin to go well am i without ambition and motivation now because <laughs> it's actually this divine dance of rest mm -hmm. to see these things unseen fulfilled and i think it's the most pleasing thing to god and that we're building a kingdom that maybe isn't naturalized yet but is coming very soon and we'll see the fullness of it yeah. Oh, it's profound what you just shared, Ben. I mean, literally, he becomes our pursuit, doesn't he? Like, Jesus becomes our source. He becomes our wealth. He, you know, and he clearly has, is this for you? He is the core strength of your life. You want, you, he is your wisdom. He is, mm -hmm. he is everything to you. And to co-create with him and to co-reign with him is the greatest privilege, isn't it? And like you said, we can bring things from that union. We can bring expressions into the marketplace that have never been seen before. And also a culture. That's something else that we see exemplified in your life. I know it's something that WES is intentionally building in the economic systems that they're developing at the moment, different economic offerings, is to what does it look like to build a system that is a reflection of the heart of God? So from and, and I think we can only do it as, as our hearts become detached from Babylon, like you were saying, where we're no longer dependent on a world system for our security, mm -hmm. identity, self-worth, confidence. Uh, the, the, the world systems don't define our identity anymore. They don't define uh, success for us anymore, like you've just said. You know, it, it, success is not materialistic attainment in the kingdom of God, is it? It's it's a fulfilled life where all of our needs are met through our through His riches and glory through Jesus meeting every single need, and expressing through us. So I know it's I love the journey that we're on as at the moment and you're on and the marketplace is on the kingdom marketplace is on in exploring what the partnership looks like in this dispensation. What does the expression of business look like going from here and and, uh, and first and foremost, how do we affect culture? How do we affect culture with the presence of God? So can you speak into a little a little bit more into that, Ben? You know, for people who are marketplace people listening to this, what does the culture of the kingdom look like in a marketplace ve vessel that can clearly impact everyone around us? And again, a very big question that I've. I know I'm asking, asking you for huge quite questions. A long time. I know I see you live in it, and I'm sorry, I'm challenging you to articulate what you live unconsciously, probably most of the time. <laughs> right. So yeah. evident in your life, right? Well, I framed it up in the beginning with saying that it doesn't look like what you expect it to look like, and that's something mm -hmm. the Lord's really been challenging me about lately. Is that even in terms of our relationship with Him, we have this expectation. Uh, that's preconceived within us about ecstasy in the Lord and raptures look and feel a specific way. They may feel that way at times, but in other times it's designed to be our perfect normal. So this mm -hmm. earth walk, this earth journey, and even our spiritual walk, I'm finding out it's extremely normalized as you come into this union with him, but that it's so laden with rest and peace that you begin to feel um, this normalization of 
like a divorce from self-will or the will of others, where, like I was saying mm. before, your faith is so invested in him that, like I've told you in private, is that many times now I don't have asking prayers. It's biblical ask, but so much of that is driven from self-ambition or will or um, how we believe things are supposed to be constructed or built, but we need to give more expanse. And I feel the pleasure of the Lord every time I go to him and he tells me to ask. And then I actually give it back to him and say, you give me the question to ask because I've mm-hmm. lost all my questions now. And I've lost all of my permission to even feel as though I know what to ask for because it's so much grander and it's so much larger and there's things that we haven't seen birthed yet, or like the words that you use, culture. I think there's other words and simulations and realities like culture that we don't even understand that are so important to the kingdom of God that we'll, we'll see displayed on the earth. But um, yeah. I think the answer to that for me is constantly laying things down and trusting by faith that he has the answer for it. Um, we've walked through trials and tribulations together and I'll share many times with you, like I'm going through walking through an hellfire right now right. <laughs> and the fear of right. the Lord. Complex business Help. issues and yeah, legal, ca- all yeah, sorts. legal yeah. cases, all sorts. Legal cases and, and accusation. And, but yeah. I've really found the discovery of rest that you talk about. And I, I've had yeah. people come up to me and say like, how do I warn the spirit? I've been up all night, you know, praying in tongues and fighting demons. And uh, I've, there's this place of union now yeah. where he has all of our best interests at heart that we yeah. find every need addressed without me knowing what my needs are anymore. <laughs> yeah. That physical and material things are just laid up naturally and easily, um, partly because you just know everything will be taken care of that you know that you know because of your walk with him. Um, But yeah, that's a roundabout way of sort of answering. (laughs) I love it. I love it, Ben. You know, I keep thinking, I'm just like, I'm just going to grab the scripture because I, like I started at the beginning of our conversation, you really do embody, where is it? Let me see. It's, it's um, Mm -hmm. Ephesians six. It is, isn't it? Um, Verse 10 be supernaturally infused with strength mm-hmm. through your life union with Jesus Christ. So you you have simplified in the complexity of your life. What I hear you saying is you've literally found that treasure of simplifying back to being in the mystical union, living in infused strength, which is the fullness of the strength of God, the entire expression of whatever needs you have, you know, in the business context, in your personal life, everything, the cu- setting the culture, you know, ref- reflecting his nature, releasing supernatural power, relying on divine wisdom for those breakthroughs with those legal complex cases and deals and whatever you're de- dealing with on your day-to-day basis, on a day-to-day basis. It's living in the divine strength of the mystical union, isn't it? And like you said, just, sitting in peace yeah. knowing the power of rest as you sit there because it really is the seat of government isn't it because you can hear him there it's like be still and know that i'm god and you actually counter again the reality of him being majestic sovereign god and i see that in you as well you know and the more you like when we've talked the more you've gone on in this simple in the heart of you of the brilliance of you you sit in this adoring posture, don't you? You just love him. So is that, I mean, if we, if you could give one key away from your life of like, this is the key to <laughs> success in life, do, would you say that's it? Absolutely. So, and as you were speaking, you? it reminded me of, I was just weighing upon the Lord before we got on this morning. It was yeah. literally in several minutes right before this. <laughs> and I just leaned in and I immediately was taken in before the father. And I saw myself as Christ laying on his chest and wrapping my arms under his garment and around his inner garment. And I just went, you see me as Christ. Cause he's been telling me that recently. We're like, you look so much like him. You're just like him. 
I designed you and you look just like him to please me. And yes, it's for me, but it's also for all of us that are coming into the full stature of Christ that I was seeing Mm -hmm. myself as him because we're Mm -hmm. in him and we've achieved that righteousness by faith to actually lay our head upon the chest of the father as Christ Jesus. And then he was telling me, don't, don't tell them any principles. (laughs) <laughs> it's not oh about God. that. And I, I'm realizing too, like, as we're sharing, I'm, I'm dancing around some of it because it's about the ease. It's yeah. about the presence. It's about yeah. laying on his chest and life union with him and that it's yeah. not, you know, <laughs> the principles, wow. the steps, there are ABCs that are so simple, the gospel, the kingdom, your faith, but it's designed to be that simple. Oh, my goodness. I love that. I can feel like people breathing out, watching the family watching, because it, you know, no matter how complex your life circumstances, no matter how complex your business day is, it's not about having our personal relationship with Jesus at home. Is it our quiet time? And we live that out there and then we go off and compartmentalize our life. That's us. That's spiritual me. And now I need to go in and be task focused in my business environment but actually we live in him all the time we live in him and like you said leaning I love that that you saw yourself leaning on the chest of the father as Christ because we're one in him now we're enfolded into Christ he just sees Jesus as he looks at us isn't that amazing and so living from there resting on the father you do life basically you just do life as an overflow as an expression of Christ in your context. From the and become divorced life. from all these needs and desires yeah. because it's only in him is our utter fulfillment. I mean, that's what I was going to say too, is you do reach this point of life union where you realize everything is so invested into him. Um, you know, every thought that you have is about him. Um, it may not be, realized by your consciousness as being him constantly in front of your face but you do realize that every action that you're making every thought that you're having is for the obtainment of christ and for the fulfillment and nature of him to be on display and measured up against who he is and what he is and so i'm just realizing it's so important like you said that the people are just breathing out right now because i know when i stepped into this 10 years ago, all kinds of favor, blessing, you know, all the good stuff (laughs) Um, just, just happened upon me. Now we're in kind of the battle stages of it because we know we're dying, laying things on the altar. We're going to see more resurrection of things and made constant and solidified. But Mm -hmm. um, it's because I just keep going back to, I don't have the answers I don't even necessarily know what I'm doing anymore, (laughs) but he knows and he set me on a path and I just have to walk in absolute trust and faith where I've even let go of everything in many ways. Yeah. Yeah. But I wanted to say too, um, some time ago I had a vision where I saw myself walking between the battle lines. It was like kind of walking through the no man's land. And the Lord was speaking to me this morning about this is the land that's outside of the walls of Babylon. And I believe so many people have left and have had that death and co-crucifixion experience with Jesus. And now they're in the no man's land. And what I saw in this picture was the army at the left and the army at the right, or you could say the army at the south and the north or the east and the west, you know, facing each other immediately, the, the strong infantry. And I was walking directly down the center of it. Now, each one of them believed I belonged to their side. And because of that, neither attacked me. So red side believed I was red, that I was friendly. Blue side believed I was blue and friendly. And so what I had the capability to do then was walk directly down the middle of the battle line from one expanse to the other. And what was set in front of me was Zion, Mount Zion. And I think that that's what people are walking through right now. They don't see 
Zion in front of them, because like we were talking about today, that's the naturalization of the faith realm. And I think that we don't realize that it's our faith and measure inside of him, his holiness, where now we have permission and the ability to see. It is as simple as opening our eyes. So I believe now people's eyes are being opened and they've become divested from the side of left and right, north and south, east and west, blue and red, whatever it may be, to actually realize we don't belong to the battle anymore, but that we're walking into the new Jerusalem. And that that's yeah. the ultimate goal and attainment and establishment, yeah. the tree of life. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, Ben. I love that. It's so powerful. It's a, yeah. Oh gosh, I could talk to you for hours about this whole subject. I'm just going to share something really quickly that's in relationship. And then let's pray for everybody quickly before we finish for, for today. But yes, I know what you're saying I, I, and I feel it and I've been experiencing this myself and talking with other people. There is such an awakening happening in so many of us right now to realize that we live from within. We are already in Christ. We are already a new creation. Our soul is catching up. It's being transformed, right? And is awakening and absorbing the reality of who we already are. And we are ultimately, we are heading towards the millennial reign. Kingdom is coming on earth. This whole thing wraps up with a wedding where we are made, brought forth as the perfect image of Christ to be his equally yoked counterpart forever, a suitable bride for the living Christ. I mean, it's just mind blowing, isn't it? Um, and the, whether the, so the whole process is ultimately headed towards that, whether your preparation process is predominantly in the marketplace or whatever is going on. I think there's a, there's an, a, definitely an awakening happening of increased awareness and also increased obsession where almost the things of this world now are growing strangely dim. They've lost their hold. They've lo the trinkets and the sparkles have lost their attraction. We're becoming obsessed with Jesus, which is appropriate as we're falling in love with a single focus and having a holy obsession with Jesus Christ, who the one who is going to be our bridegroom, is our bridegroom forever and ever and ever. We're being made ready, aren't we, without spot, blemish or wrinkle. And to co-partner, co-reign with Christ and to co-create, bringing in the millennial reign, whatever that's going to look like. I mean, obviously, I'm just speaking the bird. We, we don't know what that looks like. We're, we're we being made ready for the implementation of that yeah. now. And so I think there's a, just a holy dissatisfaction for anything else, isn't there? Nothing else can meet our needs and everything else is falling away. There is just, I just know that I'm experiencing that. And even, even um, where we've relied on giftings in the body of Christ, historically, those gift, you know, those giftings will always be there because we're, you know, they're, they're there for us to be able to serve the body of Christ you know, until we attain the fullness of the statue of Christ together to build one another up and and to serve other people with. But I can feel at the moment even um, an increase of ability forming in all of us to reveal Christ, to release the heart of Jesus and the revelation of Jesus from our nature rather than just reliant on our giftings, where sometimes we've operated in, say, a prophetic gifting, prophetic office, but there's been a lot of pain going on in our hearts. And there's been a we've not we've not been reflecting the nature of Christ fully from here but yet we all prophesy here and it can create a mixture you know what i mean yeah, i yeah. feel i'm feeling like that's happening as well in the marketplace in the ministry traditional ministries everywhere there's a there's an increased grace now right now to reveal jesus and to be consistently and, and aligned in in who we are in him and to express him more perfectly than we have before and to know that this is his planet this planet doesn't belong to Satan. The marketplace is not under the control of Satan. Yes, yes. You <laughs> may have temporal <laughs> expression there in pockets, but actually the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And we're awakening to that and getting hold of that truth now and beginning to walk in and express it. And you are most definitely one of the forerunners in that expression. You know, kingdom on earth, kingdom on earth, not Babylon's grip being the order of the day. Jesus is the creator, for goodness sake. 
<laughs> so saying easy. Not. Pardon? <laughs> it's so easy. It's so simple. <laughs> It's so simple. It's so simple when you can see, like you say, and, what, and our eyes are opening now. And you're such a living testimony of it. You really are. So, Ben, in finishing our conversation for now, could you just quickly pray for everybody watching for this this reset for them? Yes. This okay, grace actually. that you walk in to land on everybody, on the whole family watching. <laughs> I'm actually going to kind of do a wild card. He showed me how to pray this morning. You can do whatever you like. Oh, yeah. You're a powerhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, we see yourself open up your chest to welcome in your bride by the wound in your side that's opening full wide to see every foot step in and experience the tangibility of the softness of the heart of Christ upon the bottom of their feet. So even now in the position of our hearts, we wait upon you and there's expanse in this waiting. And as he speaks to us, we're going to speak his words directly back to him. So even in your prayer language, whether it be in English, whether it be by the spirit, I just see him opening up his mouth and pouring out revelation and his original tongue out to you that you would hear him for the first time removing all the fear pain suffering there's a dissipation of it and it's blown away by the wind of the spirit so i'm just going to pray for a moment as he speaks to you and you're going to hear him wow <laughs> at a katiem Merasatien, Eleon, Ekeam, Rosadai, Elohim, Adonai, Orakantien, Renem Harien, Eleon, Kamsatien. So, Jesus, we open wow, up the gateway of trust by your own hand that we can leave this outer realm and come into the realms of your perfect spirit where there is grace and the tip of your pen is authoring on the books of our love perfect faith that's counted to you unto righteousness that is looked at by the eyes of the father and seen as the testimony of glory this is the witness of all things good the culmination of the fullness of the times written in our hearts that is the nature and the kingdom of god that is preached by what's inscribed upon us, that all may see the light and the glory of our risen King and make you preeminent above all things, lifted up into the heights of the heavens where all things are in perfect subjection to you, but cast into perfect order and beauty. <laughs> all things set into perfect order and beauty that this Zion realm that's at the end of this battle line that we don't belong to anymore is seen by pop open eyes of revelation that there are more of us than there are of them, but it's not even to fight a fight. It's to enter into this kingdom, the kingdom that is preeminent that Christ spoke of that it is at hand. And we just say again, it is at hand and we walk upon your hand through the wound in into this place where all things now may be built upon the original foundations that Abraham saw, the city of the living God that can rise into its full stature and maturity by perfect, simple, beautiful faith. We honor you and we bless you, King Jesus. And may our hearts forever minister to you, whether by the spirit or by our mouths. We love you. <laughs> I do. Ah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I was gone. <laughs> I had to pull back and remember we're actually in the show. <laughs> oh, oh, man. I could feel, I could feel the Lord just pulling us into a completely different position in him than when you were. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. And that from this day, family, you will be, you will know yourself in a new position, reset consumed with love for Jesus, living from within continually, constantly, your reality framed up 
by heaven, not by earth. So you live from there here, understanding that human history is on its way to being wrapped up now. We are with our king forever. That's our reality. And we are here for a flash of time to bring his kingdom on earth and reveal the truth of who he is through our lives. So Ben, amen, amen. Thank you so much for sharing your precious time with us today. I love our conversations. They're always so holy, (laughs) so life-changing. So thank you for being with us. My pleasure. And thank you all for being with us and have an amazing, amazing week and look forward to being with you again next week. God bless.